This is the beginner's guide of what not to do when first starting out in Torah, which I made a few drastic mistakes first starting out 11 years ago. <clears throat> Let's start off with keeping Passover in on uh, January 14th. <laughs> the 14th day of the first month. Yeah. 14th day of the first month. I, I came over, folks. I said, wife, kids, January 14th, we're keeping the Passover, get the saltine crackers out, <laughs> which have leavening. And uh, we, I didn't know where to get sheep or lamb, so I just had beef and grape juice. But, and then I was the only guy doing it. <laughs> Nobody else did it. Then I found out I'm like three months off. Here we go about the first month being January. January. I, had not, I had not the slightest clue what the anything was. So, <clears throat> some good food up here. We got our hot dogs and burgers. It's a good thing there's not any religious vegans here, because I'd say... If God didn't want us to eat animals, why didn't he, why didn't he make him out of food? <laughs> First time we did uh, the Feast of Trumpets, we were in Austin, Texas, and I didn't know any better. I, I had my shofar, I was all excited about the feast, and there was about a hundred people gathered together, and I said, it's the feast, I know it is, I'm going to go out and blow my horn. This is like, I don't know, 6.30 went out there into the field by myself, just wanted to praise Yahuwah myself, but started blowing the horn. Next thing you know, there's about 100 people behind me saying, where's the moon? Where's it at? Do you see it? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> that way. <laughs> you know. Because <laughs> they took that sight seriously. <laughs> And then, uh, you know, ten days later is Yom Kippur. So my study was the Jews wear all white. They wear linen on Yom Kippur. So I said, let's go to the mall. I'm buying me some, some linen or something. I want to dress in all white. I thought it was great. Took the family to the mall, shopping around. They left. They were like, all right, Shane, you just figure it out. And they were on the other side of the mall. I found me this nice linen pants, linen shirt. I was like, yes, this is what I need. I bought it, I went in the change room, I put the clothes on, I was like, yes, I am styling. I walked out, and as I'm walking through the mall, I see, like, these people looking at me, like, what the heck? And I'm like, I must just look good, you know? And, and these, this, this security guard, this lady security guard is on a scooter, this little two legs, so she's... <laughs> she's like, she stopped and said, hi, with a big smile on her, but I said, hello, you know, <laughs> thinking that everything's all good, and everybody's just, the guys are like, <laughs> so I'm thinking like, they're just jealous, <laughs> you know, I finally find my wife at the other end of the mall, and my wife's jaw hits the ground, and she's like, we can see your underwear no. through the pants. Because <laughs> it was linen. You could see right through it. And I'm walking around with dark colored underwear on. It was the most humiliating moment of my life. And I just, I was like, Andrea, get me out of here. She's like, well, we're parked over here. I said, no. The closest exit now. Now. <laughs> so, you know, and we weren't even done with our errands for the day. And here I am in the car. You know how when you're driving down the road and the truck drivers, as they pass by, they're always... <laughs> you know, why do they do that? We're at a stoplight. I'm taking these... <laughs> you, gotta get, you know, we got, still got to go to Walgreens and get up the prescription. And then this truck driver... <laughs> you know, like, why God? And so we had, you know. Anyway, that that and then and then we go on to uh, the 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 miracle of Hanukkah at my aunt and uncle's house. They're they're Torah observant, so <clears throat> you all know about the miracle of Hanukkah and the light and they live. Well, this light was a different light in this house. See, my my aunt and uncle they take it serious. They have like five Hanukkahs out. 
they've got these giant matches, and they're like, okay, everybody gets to light the Hanukkah. Everybody lit their Hanukkah. It's my turn. These big old long matches. And I'm trying to get this thing lit, you know. I'm like, and it's not going. My uncle's like, oh, just, you got you to gotta hit it like that. I'm like, okay, because it's big matches. The miracle was when I did that, it's, it broke in half and in midair lit on fire. And then it landed on the couch on a, like a wool blanket. And, and it, <laughs> I've never seen my uncle move so fast in my life. He was Christmas time, and uh, my mother-in-law lived like right behind us in the neighborhood, and uh, the whole family had gathered together, her family <clears throat> had gathered together for Christmas Eve, and you know, they're not in town all the time, and she wanted to go see them. I said, okay, you know, as long as the kids aren't eating nothing strange or bound down to no Christmas tree, yeah, let them go over there, you can see your family. And this is where God's sense of humor kicks in. And he's got a great sense of humor, right? Yeah. You know, you got Haman, you know, and Mordecai. You know, God's sense of humor is pretty funny. Except sometimes people die when he makes a joke. Yeah. Like Haman and his whole family. Right. But nobody died this day. Instead, I just made a fool out of myself. Because... It started snowing, and it never snows in Texas, and I'm at the house by myself, and they're all over there with their whole family, and they're, and they're cooking up a, a ham in the oven. Power goes out <clears throat> at their house. I still got power. I get a phone call. Hey, we just lost power. We're, we were wondering if we could just, my, this is my wife talking to me, we were wondering if we could just bring that ham over to your house. I was like, Wait a minute, I started thinking like, this is a brand new home, this is a brand new oven, it's kosher, ain't nothing unclean's ever been in it, I'm proud of that, and I just, it was like, you know, first year keeping door, you know, zealous. <laughs> <laughs> I like, absolutely not, and this is a test of God, this is my oven, this is my house, I will not allow this abominable thing into my home, absolutely not, no. And do not call me again. Bam! Hang up the phone. And then my lights go out. And it was an electric oven. So I'm like, thanks, God. You know, you could have just shut mine down when you shut theirs down. Because then all I could have said was, hey, sorry, I never got power either. You're out of luck. But no, I had to make her whole family hate me in about 20 seconds. You know? You know, as we uh, started growing and, and I started learning my mistakes, I started introducing more people to Torah. And I had a really good friend named David Johnson. And uh, it was the first time he was keeping the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And so <clears throat> he was working, though. He could only get the high Sabbaths off and he was doing construction or something. And he went to this convenience store. And, you know, he totally just, I guess, forgot it was the Feast of Unleavened Bread, because he's in there, he's like, yeah, you know, I'm make, making moves, I'm getting stuff done, you know, I grabbed a pizza, I grabbed a water, and, you know, and so he gets up to the counter and pays for it, and the guy, like, doesn't give him all the change back, and he's like, you didn't give me the correct amount of change, he's like, you know, I just forget it, you know, and then he gets to the door with his pizza, and then he remembers, like, uh, it's the... It's the uh, pizza of unleavened bread. He doesn't say anything. He, in front of the guy behind the counter, he just takes the pizza and throws it in the trash and walks out the door. <laughs> and I couldn't imagine the look on that clerk's face just watching this big crazy guy buy a pizza for my dog and then throw it in the trash and walk out the door. And it's just like, we are a peculiar people. Yes, yeah, sure. Amen. We are. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, you know, if the Old Testament seems newer than the New Testament, you might be a messianic, right? Yeah. When you're the only employee at work that rejects the Christmas bonus, <laughs> you might be a messianic. You know, you might be a Christian if you think Aviv is the guy that works at the corner. <laughs> <laughs> 
What's up, Abi? Habasim Salam. So, uh, if you're on any government watch list, you might be a messianic too. <clears throat> Now, you might be a Christian if you think that Nissan 14 is a new sports car. <laughs> He's talking about the month of Nissan, Mom. <laughs> now, when your pastor calls a board meeting about you, you might be a messianic. <clears throat> now, I don't know how, how well you... This crowd can relate to this, but in Texas, there's a lot of young messianics. And uh, the joke is, when your children do not know who Jesus is, you might be a messianic. Because <laughs> a lot of them, they don't, have the, they don't have a clue who Jesus is, but they know Yeshua. Yeah, amen. <clears throat> now, when the Jehovah Witnesses purposely pass your house to get to the other side to know... You're a messianic. You know your Bible and you're about to shut them down. That's a good way. Now, when you're more disaster prepared than FEMA, you know you're a messianic. Now, here's a new one. If you can get every waitress and cook in the restaurant mad at you, you're probably a messianic. <laughs> Take that back. There's a piece of pork touch this. You know, this guy, the whole plate is contaminated. Just take it back.